2 Kings chapter 5, verse 9. It says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Ibana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. I want to teach from the subject matter, uh, I'm not insane. I'm, I'm, I'm not insane, not insane. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you first because you are our Father. Speak to us, your children, today. We need to hear something from you that only a father can teach, only a father can talk about, only a father can discuss. It is different from a mentor because the father loves us a different type of way. For a mentor can care, but a father has a strong amount of love, and we can't part from you. So be clear, move by your spirit. Move by your power. Help us all understand exactly what you see fit for us to understand. And I thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, There is a phrase, uh, a quote if you will. In fact, it was... Albert Einstein uh, that quoted it and and he said he said that the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over again but expecting a different result that's what he said there's also another quote that says that if you always do what you've always done. You will always be where you've always been. And I've even heard the end, it'll say, you will always get what you've always got. And and, and that's a true statement, both of them. They're they're true statements. It's it's one thing if if I came out here and said, I'm going to jump off the pulpit. And, 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 but I don't want to get hurt, and I jumped off the pulpit and hurt myself the first time. Jumped off the pulpit and hurt myself the second time. Doing it more times won't take away the pain from just doing it repetitively. That it is true that doing the same thing and just expecting something to change does not automatically breed a different result. But I've lived long enough to know that there is a difference between truth and godly truth. (laughs) Godly truth, which is different from truth. Godly truth transcends truth here on earth. Uh, It's a truth that's not held or held in captive 
or held in regard by any of the laws on earth, whether it be law of gravity, law of anything, godly truth is held to a different type of standard. It's true that a man 100 years old cannot impregnate a woman 90 years old. That's true. But godly truth says that Abraham, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And, and no, you're not going to do it through your maid servant. You're going to get Sarah pregnant. And she was 90. And not only did they conceive, she carried the baby for nine months. And she birthed that baby. Godly truth. It's true that that matter, heavy, heavy matter, can't stand on two. Two what? Two hydro atoms and oxygen. H2O. But Jesus not only stood on water, H2O, he walked on water. And not only did he walk on water, he walked on it while it was a storm. Crazy waves going up and down. He walked and he didn't just walk. He had one of his disciples walk on it too. Godly truth, totally different from an earthly truth. Earthly truth says that if you die, you're dead. There's no coming back. Godly truth said that Jesus, the son of man, would die and within three days he will come back. So, so there is a difference now between earthly truth and godly truth. At the beginning of 2 Kings chapter 5, it starts out discussing Naaman. It said that Naaman was the captain of the host of Syria. He was a man of valor. And by his actions, via the power of God, he was able to win for his king on the behalf of Syria. But if you keep reading, it says, but Naaman was a leper. He had a lot of prestige. He had a lot of success. He had a lot of things going for him. And aside from that, he had the pedigree, the work ethic, and the history to receive the honor that he had. But Naaman was... A leper. And isn't it funny how on one hand you could be strong. On one hand you could be powerful. On one hand things can be progressing. On one hand things can move forward. On one hand things could be constantly and consistently moving like they've never moved before. In so much that you can receive honor and see, receive grace and receive a hand clap from another man but yet still be a leper. The juxtaposition between the two, that I can be great within me, but yet be dying within me all at the same time. That Naaman was a mighty man, a great man, a strong man. However, he was still a leper. So the Bible Next began to speak on how Syria would go on campaigns. And, and, and what that means is Syria, instead of taking their whole country and their whole city and moving into other cities and countries, they would send out their army to go to other cities and try to create agreement saying either you will be with us or bow with us or we'll tear this whole city up. They sent Syria on a campaign to Israel. While they were in Israel, Israel didn't bow down and they lost the battle. Later on, they made an agreement, but they lost the battle and they captured some of Israel's people. It speaks specifically that they captured this one Israel maid. They captured this Israel maid and Naaman took her home and made her his wife's servant. 
And she did what my grandmother would call day work. She would clean off the beds and make sure everything was fresh and cook the food. And, and, and she did all of those things. So she was at home with Naaman. That when Naaman went out, he was successful. He had a lot of armor, had a lot of prestige. But when he got home, he was a leper. And, and, and this little old maid seen it. And she said, woman, I would to God that he would go to Samaria because there is a prophet in Samaria that know how to heal this stuff. And, and that's the next thing we got to hone in on. You have to be careful who you show your leprosy to. Do not show your leprosy to a person that cannot give you a word from God, give you some type of strength from God that will ultimately lead you to getting free from the very thing that's killing you. Naaman was a strong man, however, he was a leper and he went home. And when he went home, she said, I know a, a prophet from where I'm from that will heal you of all of this stuff. Be careful because at times that seems to be the problem we run into. We have a tendency of showing the weakest thing about us to the person that know nothing about God, know nothing about moving forward, know nothing about getting ahead, and we walk away hurt and depleted and downtrodden and your heart's broken, but it's your fault. You showed your leprosy to the wrong person. In the midst of living and in relationships, you have to be clear and you have to be sure that the person that you're trying to show your leprosy to has walked with God. And you've seen God move through them and you've seen God talk to them. And then they have the pedigree that you now can walk up to them and say, I'm strong out there, but I'm a leper. So he went back to the king and he said, I'm told in Israel that there is somebody who could heal me. And the king said, do it and do it quick. In fact, I'll write you a letter and I'll send you with some gifts to make sure this thing is done. And so Naaman got on his chariots and he got his horses and because he was a general, he traveled with the company of soldiers. He didn't go by himself. It's guesstimated that Naaman went with at least over 350 soldiers and they rode down to Israel on their chariots. They rode down on their horses. They rode with their armor and their majesty. And he got off the chariot and went and seen the king of Israel and gave him the letter. King of Israel read the letter and got upset. And the Bible said he rent his clothes off and he said, I'm not God. I'm not a man that can kill a man and bring back life. And he got frustrated and ripped his clothes off of him. But over in the corner, there's a prophet named Elisha. The Bible says, and it doesn't say how, but the Bible says he heard that the king had ripped off his clothes and sent word to him and say, why doest thou thus? Why are you stressed out and irritated? Send Naaman to me so he can be clear when he leaves that it's a prophet, a man of God in Israel. And so the king sent him to the prophet and, 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 and Naaman went to Elijah's house. He went to his house with all of his majesty, with all of his army mates, with all of the soldiers that traveled with him. And he stepped down off of his chariot and he walked to the front of Elijah's house because now after all, this is Naaman, you see. Uh, this is Naaman. This isn't just some dude that can fight. This is the captain of the host of Syria, a people that has already went in and out of Israel took what they want when they want to take it and so he steps out after all I'm naming and go to the front of Elijah's house and Elijah is in the house and Elijah says go tell him to go dip in the Jordan seven times <laughs> so the servant come out he says to the general Go dip 
in the Jordan seven times, saith the prophet of God. Naaman got hot. He got upset. He says, this man couldn't even come out and stand before me. This man couldn't even come out and speak peace or speak his God stuff or his hocus pocus or whatever the type stuff he do. He couldn't come out here and see me face to face. I'm Naaman. And aside from that, there is rivers in Damascus that are cleaner than this. Whenever you're living and you're trying to move forward and put your hands on what you know God said that you can have, never be moved if a person or a situation isn't inviting when the first time you come across it. That sometimes we go through so much to get there and so much to believe. That when we finally get there, if it's not there willing and able and ready to embrace you, we get heartbroken. We feel like God isn't in it. And, and, and before I go further, I have to challenge you that as you go to get what God wants you to have, don't be moved if it don't embrace you first off. That, that, that yes... They could be hiring. And yes, you had to take three buses and four trains and walk 20 blocks. And when you walk in the job, the manager won't come see you. He sends someone who's going to be your coworker to come out and say, fill this out and I'll give it to him. But if God said that that is yours, don't be moved by that. Don't back down. Don't say, forget this. Don't say, I'm going back. Do what you need to do to get what it is. That God said you could have. Naaman was upset. He walks away. The Bible says he's in rage. Be careful of the decisions you make in your rage. Naaman potentially have aborted what God wanted him to have. Because of his anger, because of his rage, he said, what? I'm naming. Got to take this. It's cleaner rivers than this. I don't have to deal with it. And because of that, he could have lived until the leprosy ate him to death. And missed what God wanted him to have. So now I have to challenge you. Be cautious about your anger. It's not that you won't get upset. It's not that you won't get angry. But this is one of the things the Bible was talking about when it says to be angry and to sin not. It's that you can be angry, but be careful of the actions that support your anger. That you can be angry, but be cautious about the decisions and about the actions and about the moves you make just because you're upset. Naaman was enraged. And on the way back to his chariot, on the way back around his company men, the Bible says one of his servants ran to him and stopped him and said, Father, hold it. Now, hold it. Hold it. Now, if he had asked you a hard thing, wouldn't you have done it? If he'd have asked you for something tough, wouldn't you have did that? So the next thing we have to discuss is that as you move to get the things and the blessings of God, don't lock God in the box of how you think he will bless you so that when you come upon it, if it don't happen, like you pre-prepared yourself for it to happen, that shouldn't discourage you. But if you are putting him in a box, and if you do believe, well, he gonna bless me like this, and let me get prepped because he gonna do it like this and I'll get it like that, that when he don't do it, you're now discouraged. <laughs> so he talked Naaman into going back. And the Bible says that Naaman went down and let's, let's be fair to Naaman because the Jordan is disgusting. The Jordan is polluted. The Jordan 
is not fit to wash yourself in. And it's far not safe to even drink this water. So he has a point, you see. But when you're going after what God said that you could have, you have to be willing to get into some dirty stuff, some uncomfortable stuff, some stuff that, that, that looks like this is stupid. I can't do this. This don't make sense. But, but when you want what God said you could have. <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When, when you want what God said that you could have and it's just that important to you, you don't care what. You don't care how and you don't care who. Now all you care about is to get your hand on what he said that you could have. Naaman had a point. The Jordan was disgusting. But he took the word of one of the servicemen and the Bible says he went down to the Jordan. Not only did he get down into the Jordan, he began to dip. It's disgusting. This stuff stinks. Three. This is nasty. And before I go forward, I want to stop right here for a second. Because it's at this point that Naaman is thought to be insane. See, on the basis of truth, truth says it is stupid to do something over and over and over again and expect a different outcome. He did it a few times already and it was still stink. He was still dirty. He was still polluted. And nothing at all happened. Let's talk about this a little bit deeper. See, because when you are trying everything you can to get ahead, and you're trying with your heart, with your mind, with your soul, with everybody you know, with everything you got. I mean, you're putting everything you got into it. And when you try it once, and you try it again, and you try it another time, it's not stupid for you to say, all right. I'm not doing this no more. This doesn't make any sense. I'm not insane. See, when you've been through a whole lot to do something, every time you try it, take a little bit out of you. See, it, 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 whether it be big or small, but it takes, it costs something to try. And I want to talk to the people that's trying, that's really tried. I'm not talking about tried to get over. I'm talking about really really tried to do it and you tried to do it and nothing happened and you tried again and nothing happened and you tried again and nothing happened that 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 every now and again you will believe that you got to stop you got to stop because you're not insane and I don't want to look insane to others and and, and, and and if I keep going I look crazy but it's nobody but my own fault because I've already tried this and nothing happened so so I want to talk to those people who, who, who tried it with everything in them and it didn't pan out and tried it with everything in see I want to talk to you because I'm not going to throw Naaman up under the bus because after all it didn't work and the definition, Albert Einstein said, of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over again. And I know after you try it, it's scary to try again. And it's not because you're just a person of fear. You're in fear of the feeling you got the last couple times you tried it and it didn't pan out for you. <laughs> that, that this is, 
<laughs> See, it's one thing for me to try with everything I got and it don't pan out. But, but what I walk home with when it didn't work is a whole nother ball game that, that, that I can't find enough pillows to make my head comfortable to fall asleep. I, I can't find the bed that doesn't give me enough comfort to get rest. I can't find the food that nourishes a hunger in me that is not humanistic. I can't find it. <laughs> oh, God. I, Oh God, help me! You, you, I can't find it, and 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 I and I mustered up enough to try again, and, and 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 they told me they'll call me back. Yeah, you seem like you a good worker. We'll give you a call back next week, and 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 I went home. <laughs> I went home with this same old thing. I can't find a pillow. I can't find a bed. I can't find food, and I'm mustering enough, and I go try again, and. And they tell me this relationship ain't going to work any longer. And I tried it three times already. I tried it with everything in me and it didn't work. So I have to go back. And, I, and it's not so much that I don't want to try. And it's not so much that I don't want to get ahead. But it's what I got to face. If it doesn't work. It's what I have to go home to. And uh, the thought process of saying uh, that I try with everything in me, but somehow it didn't work. I believed you when you said it. That's why I was willing to try it the first time. And I believed you when you said it. That's why I was willing to try the second time. And I believed you when you said it. That's why I tried the third time. But somehow, I believe you. But what I go home with is another ball game. I'm facing another, another jumps now. That at first I was great. But then I'm a leper. And now I get a word from God and I'm excited. But it doesn't pan out. I got to go home feeling like a failure, feeling confused, challenging whether or not I even heard you in the first place. Let's get back to Naaman. So he tried three times. But he remembered that three wasn't the number that he gave me in the first place. See, when you went through hell and it knocked you down a lot, you have to do what you can to remember clearly what the word. (laughs) See, when you go through a long time and been through for a long time and tried and failed a lot of times see it's possible that while you're in the fight that you use so much energy to fight that you don't use or have any leftover energy to remember (laughs) there is a point that you can get so deep into fighting that you forgot the very reason (laughs) That you got in a fight in the first place. Why am I trying to get this job? Why am I trying to get in this relationship? Why am I trying to move ahead in this career? And you get caught up in fighting to get ahead in it and forget that it was. Forget that it was God. That sent you in the first time. And so. You remember that. Wait a minute now. He didn't say three times, nor did he say four or five, but he said dip seven times. So he dipped again. And it still stinks. And it's still dirty. And he dipped again. See, there comes a point that after you tried and fought for so long, you have to give respect to your fight. See, I want disrespect 
what it took me to try these three, four, five times. Though I want to walk away, though I don't want to deal with the loneliness and the pain and the failure of what I have to deal with of when I get back home. However, when I think about the first four or five times and the sixth time that I try, out of respect to my effort, I have to say, let me go ahead and and dip again. (laughs) Look at your neighbor, and you don't have to say it out loud, but whisper to them, dip again. (laughs) See, the more you dip, the closer you'll be to what it is God said that you could have. That I know and understand the hell and the heartache and the pain that you go through when you try and it don't work. But if you can please, sir, dip again. And so, so Naaman clearly got that six wouldn't do it. And so he dipped again. And when he came up this time, the Bible says... That his skin was cleaner than the skin of a baby. That, that not only did it clean and heal him, that thing was so potent and effective, it took him back as if he never been in a war, as if he never been in a fight, as if he never got older, and took him to the skin of something pure that's never been tainted. If you keep on trying, If you keep on dipping, when you do get to your seventh dip, the blessing that God has for you, the gifting that God has for you, the purpose that God has for you, it'll take you back as if you never went through seven times of dipping in the first place. Oh God, I want to talk to somebody that if you keep on dipping, I know it hurts. And see, some preachers will run to the keep on dipping and disrespect the pain of what it took them first six times. I want to hone in on that pain and that hell. And I want to tell you, I know it hurt. And and I want to also tell you, I know it. (laughs) I know it's tough and I know it's lonely. and You're not going to find anybody because see, all of his comrades and all of the men that he brought with them, see, they didn't go out there with him. See, they sat there and watched while he dipped and tried and failed and said, this dude is a fool. This dude is naming. How is he going to listen to some prophet that didn't even come out to talk to him? He's stupid. And I have to tell you that following after what God said that you could have will make you look Stupid. But the purpose has to be more important than what it makes you look like. And yes, it's going to make me look crazy. And yes, it's going to make me look stupid. And yeah, I can't make it make sense. And, 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 and no, I don't know nobody that understands why I keep doing what I'm doing. But, but, but if he messed around and was being honest, if he was telling the truth, if this really was a prophet, a man of God, and he did give me a word of God, what will I lose to keep on trying again? So today, I just want to challenge you. I'm not going to do all this hocus pocus stuff and say, if you give me $25 and bring it to the altar in 25 days, you can see, I'm not doing that because that's silly stuff. That's not book. It's not God. But I can tell you, if you keep on doing what God told you to do, I promise you and I declare on my life that you will have everything that God said that you could have and you will walk in everything that God said that you can walk in because it's not by might uh oh nor by power but by my spirit (laughs) saith the Lord (laughs) so in my own humble way (laughs) 
I just want to tell you to keep on dip. I mean, trying. Keep on trying. I mean, dip. Keep on dip. No, try. See, I want to tell you to keep on trying. Just keep on trying. Yeah, it hurt. Then, yeah, you look like a fool. So do I. So did Jesus. So do all of us. But at some point, you have to decide is success and moving ahead more important than what you look like while you're on your way to it? Oh. That's the problem with some of us. We either have fought so hard that we don't remember what he said in the first place or the hell that we faced when we got home when it didn't work out those first six times is killing us. And so this ain't Bible, this is me. I want to challenge you to save a little bit for the fight at home. See, and I'm not talking about your loved ones and your family, but you know, if they go too far, you know, you put them in their place too. But, 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 but I'm going deeper than that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about in you. I'm, I'm talking about what you face in you when you really, see, forget what a person says. I'm, I'm saying when you, when you really know that I put it all in this, that I really tried to do it right this time, when you know you've given it all you got and it doesn't work out on your way back home save a little bit pray for a little bit do what you can to be able to deal with the fight you got to fight when you get at home and you see that hadn't anything changed yet see I'm talking real life because a lot of people fail not because they didn't try they failed because when it didn't work out and they went home that home thing is what killed them see it wasn't out here it was what happened at home that killed you it was laying in the bed in silence saying this life is stupid and who and what do I believe anyway I went to this church and they said do this my God it didn't work and I went to this conference and the pastor said do that and my God it didn't work and I read these set of scriptures that my family told me to read and I read it every day for a week And it didn't work either. So not only do I feel like a failure, I'm lonely, I'm confused, and I don't know what to do. But if you keep on dipping, if you keep on doing what he told you to do, you will have everything that he said you could have. Because it wasn't Naaman's job to figure out how that dirty, polluted, disgusting stuff was going to change his, cl- his skin wasn't his job. wasn't his job to consider it and even wonder whether or not it, it worked for anybody else. wasn't his business. It was his job to be obedient. And so today, I'm going to pray for you, and then I want you to pray for yourself. I'm going to give you time to talk to God for you. We, we want to pray for a few things. We want to pray because I know somebody in here. In fact, I know a few people in here. And it's not because I heard it, but, but in studying for this, I could see your face. See, I know that there's some people in here that, 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 that's going through a fight, and this ain't your first time dipping. Oh, no, this ain't the first time that, that you're on dip for a five, but you're getting a little weak, and it's not that you're weak out here. <laughs> you losing at home because you'd rather not try than to face what you faced when you failed the last time. It's not that you don't want it. It's just to go through it not working out again is what I don't want to deal with. So, so I want to pray for that. And I want to pray for your tunnel vision that you just keep on. That you just keep on dipping. Because you have nothing to go back to. See, if Naaman would have stopped, he would have got out stinking, funky, dirty, 
and he already looked crazy in front of everybody, and then he would have had to ride home still a leper. And it'd be good to do everything God said and, and prove him, uh-oh, to see if he'll be consistent with his word. It's better off that you do everything God says and be able to potentially say, I did everything you said and it didn't work. Because see, that's the problem. We can never truly say that. We can say I tried. We can say I did. We can say I changed. But we can't go to God himself and say, I literally did, God, every single thing you told me to do, exactly how you told me to do it, and it won't work. See, I don't know the person that could say that. Put anybody in front of me that's tried and never got it. 20 years working, never got it. And I'm sure that it's something that God said that they didn't do. It's not that God don't love you. It's not that God didn't give you the word. You didn't stick to the program. And so I want to pray for that. And after we finish praying for that, I'm going to release you home because I don't want to hold you. Stand to your feet. All, all I did was to tell you that you're not insane. <laughs> yeah, I know what Albert Einstein says, and yes, he was intelligent, and his works are respected even to this day, but Albert Einstein ain't God. And yes, he can have a truth, but it's something different than a godly truth. That, that God can come down here and walk on oxygen and walk on water and die and resurrect himself God can take two fish and five loaves of bread and break it and break it and break it to 15,000 men not including the women and children will get fed and they'll have scraps truth says you can't take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed eight people let alone 15,000 men But he did it. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> he, he did it. Truth says you can't take someone who burns with desire and who finds their success in life killing Jewish people and take them and blind them and make him one of the most prolific, <laughs> prolific apostles. That's ever walked this earth. Truth says, leave him alone. He's been killing your people already. But when God says, he got a truth that's not consistent to what the world says. Now, there's some things that you're going after in your life that truth says you're stupid. And truth says this ain't ever going to work out. And, and, and the truth is you're around the wrong folks. And the truth is, they telling you this and telling you, see, all that's true. But what's God's truth in the situation? And, and, and does God's truth line up with the truth that you're feeding on? So, so I, that's what this message was about. You're not crazy. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what age bracket you're in. If God said it, I don't care if you're 30 years in, 40 years in, 50, 60 years in. If he said it, if he said it, y'all, I overlooked that song. It was in scripture as well, but it was a song. Whose report are you going to believe? And you say, we shall believe the report of the Lord. I got tired of hearing it on my nerves but I start living a little bit <laughs> and there were some things God told me to go after and in the midst of it I started believing other reports reports of other people I start believing my own report but my report and their report isn't God's report that's just the fact that's the godly truth I want to challenge you to hone in on the godly truth of you and the godly truth of your life.